Very well. So we are at the point of this lesson in which we have to come up with an actual numerical example to understand some of the other stuff we're going to talk about this week. So that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to continue to use the example of Black Dog, our barbecue sandwich shop, to uh, illuminate some of this. We're going to give you some actual numbers, hypothetical numbers, but numbers that uh, in some way recreate reality a little bit. Uh, but before that, let's hear the setup of the issue by hearing from um, Mike, which is the owner of the Black Dog, what is uh, the main issue he has that is related to what we're going to talk about. So let's hear from him first, and then we come back here. We thought, well, we'd need this many people to serve this many, uh, this many customers. And then as we got busier, we realized we could divide the restaurant up into three sections. We need three servers all the time. Sometimes we need to add a fourth. It's just based on how busy we are. And that's just the number of people that can work in here efficiently without being too crowded. If we had tried to add more people in, you sort of get to a point where it doesn't work anymore. You got people are just getting in each other's way. Um, and so that's kind of worked out where each server gets about four, four to five tables. And then um, we know that we need them all the time. And it's just the demands of the business and how many people are showing up. And then as far as producing the food, we started with two cooks in our, on our serving line. And then we realized at a certain point if we added a third cook, that we would be able to produce the food faster and be able to move more people in and out. And so the third cook was more efficient, but we can't add any more than that because there's not enough space. Um, so that's sort of the maximum that we reached there. And then we ended up adding some people in the back because we needed to be able to um, do the prep work and get everything prepared so the people on the line can do the work faster. And uh, so it's kind of a limitation or an equation between the amount of avail available space and the number of people. Uh, that we need to do the work. Okay, so essentially what Mike was saying is that the problem he has is that he, the kitchen is too small for the number of cooks that he would like to have. So there's too many cooks in the kitchen. This is really related to what we have been talking about this week, which is this idea of as you increase the number of workers with a fixed input, you run into uh, limitations for that fixed input and your workers become to be more unproductive. So let's see if we can come up with an actual uh, numerical example for barbecue sandwiches, which is the example we're using, that kind of recre recreates this idea of diminishing marginal returns to the variable input. So here's what I have. Suppose that uh, this was the production function for um, barbecue sandwiches for Black Dog, which is our store. They make a lot of other stuff, but we're going to focus on the sandwiches themselves. So when they have no cooks, they have no sandwiches. When they have uh, one cook, now they can make any sandwiches, and they have a total of 40 sandwiches. When they have uh, two cooks, they have 90 sandwiches. So this, the first cook brought 40 additional sandwiches. The second cook added 50 additional sandwiches. The third cook uh, increases output to 120. That means 30 more. The fourth cook to 135. That's 15 more. The fifth cook, uh, 140, which is uh, five more. And the last cook, or uh, the sixth cook, uh, increases to 142, which is two more. So um, if we put this um, in a diagram, we can see that um, the curve we actually have is what we call the total product curve. And we'll just simply put uh, uh, the information we have in those two columns in a diagram with uh, number of workers on the horizontal axis and the output that they produce together in the vertical axis. And you see what you get is a curve that is increasing at a decreasing rate. And that makes sense because the slope of that curve, which is, it tells you how many more work, how many more sandwiches each additional worker is bringing to the operation. So you, each worker is, in, is uh, by adding, every time you add a worker, your, your number of sandwiches increases, but it increases by a smaller number than when you brought the worker before. That is particularly after the second worker. In fact, if you actually uh, take the slope of that curve and graph it along the vertical axis, uh, we call that the marginal product of labor. The slope of this total product curve, which is a change in output every time you add one more worker, is called the marginal product of labor. And if you actually graph that against the number of workers, what you get is that at the beginning, your productivity of workers is increasing. Then after you add more workers, it starts to decrease. Now we can also see that on the table. Here's uh, the same table with one additional column that actually calculates the marginal product of labor. And again, the equation I'm using to calculate that 
additional column. It's what we call the marginal product of labor, which is the variable input in this case. And that is going to be the additional output each additional worker brings. So to calculate it, you can just simply say the change in output every time you change your workers, right? That's how you calculate. So the first one is the change in output is going to be 40, and workers are changing one to one. So the marginal product of the first worker is 40. The marginal product of the second worker, marginal product of labor of the second worker, is going to be, well, the second worker increase output to from, from 40 to 90, which is 50 more, again, one worker, so this will be 50. But when you add the third worker, that third worker increases output from, from 90 to 120, which is only 30 more compared to 50, which is the increase of the worker before that. So you see that at that point, the change in the increase in output starts to go down. And that is what we, what we call diminishing marginal product to the variable input. That's what we have the discussion. So you see that this example for uh, this hypothetical example for the black dog case recreates what we know about reality, which, which, which is that as you increase the variable inputs with a fixed input, the variable inputs become more unproductive, and also recreates what Mike's is, uh, problem is having, which is that at some point you have too many cooks in the kitchen and they start running into each other. Okay, so now that we have the example, we can use the same example and add the cost to that equation, and that's what we're going to do in the next section. Produced by OCE Atlas Digital Media at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign.